Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael P. Roman. Yesterday's primaries were a big win for Governor Cuomo, but an even bigger loss for a number of incumbent Democrats hoping to return to Albany next year. Governor Cuomo easily defeated progressive challenger Cynthia Nixon in the Democratic primary, claiming the Democratic nomination and setting up a general election face-off with the Republican Mark Molinaro. Cuomo was further boosted by results in the Attorney General and Lieutenant Governor primaries. But the night did not go well for many Democrat incumbents in the New York Senate. Six members of the Independent Democratic Conference who collaborated with Republicans lost their primaries, including IDC founder and leader Jeff Klein. Klein, one of Albany's most powerful politicians, lost to Alessandro Biaggi, a 32-year-old progressive who rode a wave of enthusiasm and grassroots support to victory. The Senate losses were a clear signal of progressive unrest uh, within the Democratic Party, locally and nationally. And joining us now to break it all down for us is Ben Max, executive editor of the Gotham Gazette, and Laura Namias, City Hall reporter at Political New York. Welcome, both of you. Thanks. So, Laura, let me start with you. What were the bigger headlines that came out of yesterday's primaries? Uh, the blue wave stops here, at least at the top of the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, Governor Cuomo and his entire slate of candidates who he was backing for the statewide offices, Lieutenant Governor and Attorney General, all were victorious last night. And the governor won by a really healthy margin, 30-something um, points. Cynthia Nixon didn't do any better last night than Zephyr Teachout, who was a virtually unknown law professor. Um, did in 2014, and that was despite all of her high name recognition and, and a longer campaign. So um, he, he beat back questions about his ability to put big numbers on the board. Yeah. No, I think uh, Laura's exactly right. Obviously, the establishment is very strong, at least uh, for the statewide offices. But then, of course, the other headline, as you alluded to in the open, is these state senate races where so many members of yeah. the former IDC lost to progressive challengers. And it so it shows this little bit of a dichotomy that the you know progressive wing of the party in New York wasn't able to topple Governor Cuomo. He spent over twenty million dollars on the race. We have to note. Um, but is that the difference? <laughs> is that why he and his fellow um, candidates survived while the IDC members and other would, incumbents de were defeated? I wouldn't say it so simply as that, but I'd say that's a part of the equation. I mean, there were serious problems with Cynthia Nixon's candidacy. I mean, voters taking a leap of faith on a newcomer to politics for a state Senate seat is very different than voters right. taking a leap of faith uh, for someone with no government experience to be governor. So it's a factor. But, um, you know, these state Senate races really showed something happening in New York politics that didn't necessarily get to the governor's office but certainly shows um, where some energy and organizing is that, that wasn't there before. You know, Laura said that the blue wave stops here. That's one of the headlines. But I, I, I saw a commentator say that actually the defeat of the IC candidates was a blue wave by proxy, which is because they were so supportive of Republicans and New Yorkers are so fed up with Republicans and Donald Trump that that's why they were defeated. You think that's there's something to that? The, absolutely. I, I think that... Um, the IDC has existed and has been collaborating or had been collaborating with Republicans for years in New York, but that was something that never really penetrated the public consciousness here in New York. And the first time that we saw people really start to become aware that the IDC existed and what exactly its role was in the state Senate was after the election of Donald Trump. When people were looking for fake Democrats or looking for uh, reasons why Trump may have been victorious. So there's been, um, the people who voted last night in these state Senate races had been angry for a while. Um, and they were, they were itching to play some kind of role yeah. in the, the national conversation. And this was their chance. And in I'll New just York. say quickly that before Cynthia Nixon was ever in the gubernatorial race, these folks were organizing to take out these IDC senators. Who, who was it that was exactly? Who was organizing? Was it the the Working well, Family Working party? Families Party? But it's the you know, USA, the, Democratic Socialists of America. A more bit. than that, there were uh, specifically in um, Biagi's race and in a couple of races in Brooklyn, there were a coalition of former Obama and Clinton operatives who had gotten together huh. to help provide free training to potential candidates. People were looking for Democrats to run in races all around the country after the Trump election. There was just a tremendous amount of energy uh, that was looking for a place to go. So a lot of those candidates had been on the ground for 12 months, 13 months, 14 months, and 
they were they were organized. It wasn't just a flash in the pan. Let's talk about Letitia James. She won pretty handily, even though the polls seemed to indicate that it was pretty close at the end. Her connection to Governor Cuomo, is that going to curtail her independence as attorney general, do you think? Well, I think a couple of things. One, it's clear that Zephyr Teachout and Sean Patrick Maloney were fighting for a lot of the same votes, and mm -hmm. that factor helped Letitia James uh, take the nomination, as well as her, obviously, her very strong base of support in New York City and the connection to Governor Cuomo, who was running lots of ads that included her. On the independence front, there's no question that there's serious questions about her independence, both from Cuomo and just establishment Democrats in the state legislature. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty uh, was helping get her elected as well. His PAC donated tens of thousands of dollars to her campaign. So if you're looking for someone in the AG's office to help root out corruption in state government, I don't know that we can rely on Letitia James to be to be that candidate. Yeah, we talked about uh, Cynthia and Nixon losing by the same margin, essentially, that Zever Teachout lost four years ago. But in her concession speech, which is more like a victory speech, uh, it seemed, um, she was very buoyant. And in fact, she said that the Cynthia effect, the effect of her campaign, moved the governor to the left and move the entire New York Democratic Party to the left. Did, did she have that effect? I think that that is actually a pretty fair assessment. I, the governor spending $20 million to defeat her is so yeah. much more money than he spent four years ago when he really didn't take the challenge from Zephyr Teachout seriously. And almost as soon as Cynthia Nixon got into the race in March this year, um, she had some very uh, uh, strong critiques of the governor that he took seriously and as soon as she made them almost he he seemed to move his positions or he would announce a, a, a change he decided to back the legalization of recreational marijuana he decided to uh, that he was for um, a ban on single-use plastic bags yeah. he announced that he was dissolving the IDC or that he'd reached right. a deal right. to dissolve the IDC which he said he couldn't do before and, and, and he issued an executive order allowing paroled uh, felons to vote. Absolutely. So in about 15, 20 seconds, biggest loser, biggest winner yesterday. Um, well, I'd say Jeff Klein and the IDC <laughs> were right. the biggest losers. I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's just, you know, very clear. In terms of the biggest winners, I mean, Letitia James is up there. Letitia James is up there. I think, and this is maybe a little bit uh, uh, inside baseball, but uh, 32BJ um, put That's a the, lot of SCI, bodies. SEIU, SEIU Union. Um, put a lot yeah. of bodies on the ground to help Alessandra Biaggi defeat Jeff Klein, and they can really claim that they helped yeah. with that victory, which is the biggest upset of the night, yeah. I think. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us today to talk about this. You bet. Thank you.